Hey, Diet Wise, page 15, here we go. It's actually uh, the end of, well, the beginning of Casebook 2. So I'm just to review. Cliff's condition was so bad that on the train ride to his honeymoon destination, he had, he had the need to lie down and rest his head on the lap of his new bride. No, he was not drunk, but certainly reacting to food at the wedding feast, as we shall see. <clears throat> In 1953, he underwent a partial gastrectomy on the recommendation of the local professor who had diagnosed a stomach ulcer. It didn't work. Oh, go figure. 21 years later, he was subjected to a vagotomy, vagotomy serving the important vascous nerve to his gut, severing the important vascous nerve to his gut. And again, the procedure didn't work. The diagnosis was end wrong therapy. It was wrongly diagnosed and done. So he's now cut up and destroyed. It doesn't say that in the book. I said that. By the time Cliff consulted me, he was so weakened that he had difficulty shaving. He would lather up and have to rest and then shave a little and then would need another rest and so on. He was very sick. He was a very sick old man and felt ready to die. Fortunately, this was an easy case. Allergic to beef and dairy products. How about that? <clears throat> I told him to avoid anything from a cow, and he has never looked back. He and his wife, Joan, who was also a patient of mine, are a game elderly couple. I had to reread it because it was it didn't make sense. Are a game elderly couple still actively engaged in church and community work. Both claim that they feel fitter and happier now than at any stage in their lives. In fact, Cliff boasts he's healthier today than he was 60 years ago, and that's the power of diet-wise eating. Bam! Let's go on. Joan and Cliff, incidentally, illustrate another point I discovered in my practice. Strongly bonded couples tend to drift in the direction of each other's dietary intolerances. It rather echoes the way females living together tend to adopt similar menstrual cycles. Da, da, da. So that's interesting because my wife and I both uh, have the gluten and dairy problems going on. Everyone has toxic foods, including you. The hidden or masked food allergy has often been called the hidden enemy, with good reason. It's extraordinarily common and yet little understood or recognized. It's the real reason why detox diets work. I'm on record with the BBC saying that virtually everyone has a food allergy. This was years before recognizing genetic food incompatibilities as an alternative phenomenon. Only one can be allergic to anything. Sorry, one can be allergic to anything. Even from, even to vitamin supplements, bees are often synthesized from yeast, vitamin C from corn, vitamin E from wheat germ, and so on. A food allergy or intolerance isn't such a big deal if you, you are generally well, but it is still very common. If you know the right questions to ask, Nancy Wise of the BBC World Service clearly didn't quite believe me and before interviewing me she sent a roving microphone in onto the streets outside Bush House in London. No one was more surprised than she when 18 out of 20 people stopped and said sure I have an allergy or words to that effect. You'll have to come back tomorrow for page 16. Have a great day.